Let the galaxy burn. Hi guys, Skypoint here. Today's video is about Argyl Tal and why you might want to play as Argyl Tal instead of as his alter ego, Raum the Demon. The answer is pretty simple. Although Raum is incredibly powerful, we'll just go over and check him out again one more time here. There we are. Oops, that's not it. Raum was up here. All right. So Raum is, has these amazing stats. Three attack, 30 health, and every time he, hit, he kills a unit, he heals two. And often early in the game, you're going to be killing a lot of units as Raum. However, there's a big problem with Raum, and that is that, if we went up here, you can only play as Raum from the beginning if you include 15 Chaos cards. That means half of your deck has to be Chaos cards in order to start as Raum. And that might be all well and good while you don't have much of a collection of word bearer cards. But as your collection begins to round out, you can see here I'm pretty much just missing two of them at this point. Skipping out on a lot of those powerful word bearers abilities is a huge penalty, or phrased it another way, filling up your car, your deck with chaos cards, which are some of the worst neutral cards, it's a big handicap. And Raum is great, but he's perhaps not quite great enough to um, overcome that handicap. Sorry, I was just trying to go back to my collection and see about looking at Raum again down here. There we are. He's great, but he's not quite great enough to justify, in my opinion, filling up half your deck with Chaos cards. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about my deck for Argyl Tal. So don't get thrown off by the name here. I just love the name of the pre-constructed deck. And I built an Argyl, an Argyl Tal deck, and I'm going to show you how it works. So first of all, let's quickly recap the Warlord. He's got this neat little thing where you can spend one energy to deal one damage. And if the target dies, he can act again. Now, one thing is you can actually use this on your own people as well. Some of the people, uh, some people have commented about that on my uh, earlier videos, and I hadn't thought about that. And it's correct. I don't kill my people that often with Argyl Tal. In fact, in the videos I show you, I don't think I kill them at all. But it's a handy trick you can sometimes pull off. But more to the point, once Argyl Tal kills, where has it gone down here? I've got to go back to collection. Sorry. Once Argyl Tal has killed at least three units, either with his ability or direct face bashing, he turns into Raum anyway, and he heals for five. So basically you get the benefits of Raum while also having a deck full of word bearers. All right, back to my deck over here. Let's go and review it quickly. You can now see that most of it is word bearers. There are 20, tr 20 troops and 10 tactics. Let's run through what I have here. So I've got Testamentum Veritas and two of them because I've got a lot of demons or Astarte slash demons to be more precise in this deck. To deal with some quick damage and also to set up some soft targets for Argyl Tal's ability, I've got a pair of Dagodol bikes. I have Dark Blessings that once I have a, an Astarte's demon, I can really pump him up heavily for late game. A pair of Zesugol squads, so these are to create some cheap troops to kill with some of my other cards. So I use them for a deliberately set up combo. Gorlim squad, well they're going to eat up the cheap troops that Zesugol squad created. Sorbak pal, and that's, you'll see this guy is great because as troops get killed because of Gorlim squad, for example, Sorbak pal will activate and you get infantry spawn, you get chaos spawns rather, so that's cool. Same thing for Codex support, they can eat up those cheap troops, but also they're a useful frontline ability. They're a useful frontline troop in their own right, so I like them there. Fanatical Zeal for some uh, pinch healing. A pair of Cethalon squads also for creating some uh, fodder in order to feed to my other troops. Jadama squads for creating useful fodder. Bargadal heavy support, so these guys are, then they don't really become demons particularly easily, but they have a neat ability which I like. Diabolus Vol, rapidly turning into one of my favorites. Uh, I love his demon host on rally, I also love his uh, stat gain as your own people die, and as an added bonus he'll buff up your other demons too. Cameo, one of the most amazing cards in the word bearer's deck, you must have a pair of these. Destiny's Hand, which is a useful little card. I'm, I thought it wasn't that great at first, but I've been putting it into more and more and more of my Word Bearers decks. 
A pair of possessed marines, because this guy can just be nasty. Architect of Heresy for messing with people's plans. Balthamir Sword for uh, also messing with people's plans. And lastly, the Dark Martyr as sort of my higher end troop. Okay, so that's the deck. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of great wins it had. Okay, so we start with a fight actually against Lorgar, which is an interesting one to face. So you can see here, I am putting away pretty much all my cards, so I didn't think that any of them were particularly great as a first move. I am also going first in this in this match, so I really want to get one of my two energy troops. It didn't quite work out that way. Alright, so nothing to do here, I'm just going to snipe at Lorgar for one point of damage. Okay, he's bringing up abandoned supplies, that's going to be painful. Okay, what comes next? Oh man, another bad draw. Okay, let's just snipe at Lorgar again. So I was down 10, I was eight, 10 points of health below him before, now I'm at 2 points of health less, and holy moly, look at that guy. Alright, let's bring in Cethalon Squad. I'm hoping he will face bash that guy into Cethalon Squad. Oh dear. Nope, he face bashed into me. Great. Okay, that's fine. I have a plan here. Okay, here we go. I am going to... Draw a cameo. Oh, you know what? I realized this video is an er earlier version of my deck, so I did have a Raising of Monarchia in there, which I ended up taking out. I didn't like it. It's too slow. Anyway, so the, I face bash into that demon just to kill it. Which is a lot of damage, but I'm hoping I'll eventually when I become Realm, I'll be able to uh, take claw back some of that damage. Okay, so he gave a demon host to Jubak over there. Let's start buffing all my guys who are in my deck. Drop a Zesugol squad over there. And let's kill that super Jubak. Alright, that's better. And now I've got heavy board control. I am really far behind. Oh my god. Okay. So I just as I was saying, I have heavy board control. That happens. Fortunately, his most dangerous guys here, they actually have only one health. So let's just use my Argol Tal ability to just snipe a bunch of them off. There we go. That's useful. I can bring in Gorlim Squad and kill one of my guys. And oh, I was hoping they would get flank, but. Meh. Yeah. Cleave 2 will do it. And let's just keep finishing people off. Essentially what I'm just doing here is making my realm conversion very cheap. You can see I can now turn into realm for 5 energy, so I can do it pretty much any time. Let's also buff my little newly spawned guy over there. 13 points of health behind him now. Okay, that's a smart move. My guy who I spent so much on buffing is back in my deck. Okay. Ah, there he's popped back out. I think. No, that's his buddy. It's the one. Actually, I, I don't know if that's the same one or not. I can't remember if he played him. If he came out of the deck before I buffed everything in my hand or not. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. So he's building up Demon Host. Okay, this is good. That's going to... uh. Oh yeah, look at that. Perfect. Drop a Cephalon squad, and I'm just going to snipe that demon so he dies when he hits my front line. Edict of Censure. Luckily, I have no tactics, so that did pretty much nothing. Indeed, that's it. Okay, he drew an abandoned supplies and he played that. There we go, that's his demon gone. Okay, so I'm starting to bounce back here. Oh, nice. Okay, let's spawn some cheap troops and drop another Gorlim squad. There we go. Now they got a nice pair of buffs. And I'm going to start playing Dark Blessing here. So let's pump up this guy as much as I can before he attacks. He's got ward, so he can't be hit with targeted removal anymore. And look at that. I love the way the card physically mutates the more of these demon hosts it has. Like, you can barely recognize what the card originally was now. And it's so damn dangerous. 
Okay, he sent back my Cephalon squad. Boo. Okay, he's got a demon. Okay, that's a smart move. He drew one tactics, they got buffed up. And I think it's... Oh, Destiny's Hand, that's clever. He just gained himself another couple of demons. Okay. Is that enough? No, I think I can just kill him now. It's not enough to save him. They got demonic muscle again, so that's it. It's over. Let's turn into Ram just to finish this off. There we go. I ended the match on 20 health. There we go. Okay, so that was a nice little win over Lorgar where I was taking the hits until I managed to sort of stabilize the situation and then just turn it around. Okay, let's take a look at the next match which I'm showing you. This one is one of my favorites because it's against Caleb Decima who is just incredibly annoying to face. So beating him down is extra satisfying. This is not a terrible starting hand. I've got stuff for my first turn, not for my third second turn I don't have a three energy unit but I'm hoping I'll draw one because apart from that I've got units for ev I've got something to play in every turn after that okay there I am I'm already stunned fantastic let's go ahead and just drop what I can okay I'm stunned again and I did not draw anything for my three energy turns so I just passed Okay, he's got a little uh, stealthy boy there. And keeps stunning me. Okay, now it's entering turn four where I do have stuff to play. Ooh, that's interesting. Let me draw that guy because he's gonna give me he's gonna lead me to having two troops at the end of this turn. There we are. Oh look at that. Okay, so much for my two troops at the end of this turn. Bye bye. Should have gone with one. Uh, four health guy instead. Okay, up to turn five. What do we do here? We are going to bring in Diabolus Vol. Because next turn I can use Testamentum Veritas to buff him as well. Okay, so much for next turn. And what's he doing? Oh god, a frontline unit. And he still has enough energy to stun me. Great. Okay, but it is the five energy turn. Let's use Camille to wipe out a, his guy as well as his stealth guy now as well. There we go. And now I'm still only five points of health behind him. This isn't a disaster yet. Okay, he's got another front line. Fantastic. Okay, and his guys are getting buffed now too. Oh, they're getting extra buffed. Where's my second Camille? Let's see here. Ouch, that hurt. Ooh, a possessed marine. Yes, let's just drop him now, because hopefully he'll spend time trying to kill him, because he's extra tough now, instead of that. By buffing him up to 7 health, it meant that he can't just use two of his units on the board to kill this guy. He's going to have to throw everyone into him. Okay, two people into him. His strongest units were thrown into him, which is fine. I'll take it. God, look at these guys. Oh, and he healed up, so now I am 11 points of health behind. And he stuns me. But he's running out of cards. See, he's a little bit low on steam. And there's my second cameo. So let's pop that bad boy down. And that's almost done a full board wipe for him. Unfortunately, I don't have any units I could have played to take advantage of that. So he stuns me again. Pride of Mars. What's coming in for 7? Oh god, it's a 7-7 seven, seven, dude. Alright. Testamentum Veritas. Do I have any demons? Yes, Diabolus Vol can be a demon. But, I'm also going to play this guy instead of Testamentum so I can get some extra spawns. Forge Complex. Okay, he's trying to fix his card draw problem. Cybernetic Cortex. Ouch. Watch this. That thing's gonna hit like a truck. And of course, it's hitting me. Okay. 
Ouch, and there goes me. Okay, 8 health only. And I'm so damn stunned again. Okay, let's drop the Possessed Marine. Let's give Testamentum Veritas to make my guys tougher. And he died, and he died, and that's it. Okay. I'm going to leave this last guy, uh, well, okay, yeah, he's attacked with him, but he can still generate a new unit for me. Ugh, invisible. Okay, and a tough frontline unit. And now uh, he's going to go and buff up massively, of course. So let's drop my Diabolist Vault. And now let's also drop my Barkle Heavy Support Squad. And this starts to buff me up more and more and more. Take out his Mechanicum front line. There we go. Getting stronger. Blessed Sun is still too expensive to play. Oh wow, look at all those units. And he stuns me again. Great. Oh, and he goes in. Okay, I'm getting so close to dying now. Ooh, fanatical zeal. That came through at the right time. So let's destroy that guy before he starts spawning mechadendrites like crazy. Now that my guys are taking a bunch of damage over here. There we are. Nice. I can now play fanatical zeal and heal myself right back up. Beautiful. And I still have enough energy left that I can play Cephalon Squad this turn. And let's just go ahead and hit him again. And we'll give Cephalon Squad a nice useful Taint of Chaos. Okay, that lucked out nicely. Okay, what's he doing next? What's he got? Okay, he's healing, so he's up to 20 health, so he's freaking 17, no, 13 points of health ahead of me. And he's got a little guy there too. Okay, he's sick of me spawning units for free. But I think that was a mistake because I now win. Yep, that was a mistake for sure. Watch this. We are going to... Attack for seven. Attack for seven more. We are going to attack with him. And lastly, we're just going to finish it off with him. Done. Okay, that was a satisfying win against Caleb Desma. That guy thought he was in control the whole way. Then he began just running out of cards, and I dominated him from that point. And the last match for this video is against Narek Draker. So again, I'm just putting away um, a couple of cards which I thought were not that great to have to start off with. Dark Blessing is really a late game card where you can play it for its reflection. Fanatical Zeal, I'll want it later on when I'm closer to dying. Okay, this is still pretty far from ideal, so let me just use my ability to shoot Draeger. And he's using his ability to create a fat-ass card, I bet. Not much I can do here, so I'm just going to drop Colex support for some frontline protection. And then next turn, hopefully, Jadama's squad will begin generating infantry for, it, Kato, for that frontline troop to use. Alright, so turn four, we are going to be dropping, ooh, that's interesting, but let's go with, J uh, with uh, Jadamus Squad, and we will just start trying to, uh, that was a mistake, I should not have attacked with Argyle Tower, I should have done it the other, well, yeah, I should, that was a mistake by me, I took one point of damage for no reason. Okay, he plays a couple of frontline units, and the Pride of Mars, okay. Luckily, I have Cameo, so I can just wipe a ton of his stuff off at once. Out at once. Let's do this. Cameo's gonna go and hit the middle barricade, which destroys it, destroys the technical servitors, and leaves his last barricade on one point of health, which I can just hit. Okay, my Blessed Sun is getting cheaper and cheaper. Now it's 13 instead of... Oh, virus bombs. Now, I was already sort of... I guess I was ahead of him on health, just about. So I sort of came out on top from that, but of course he's building up cards from his Narek Draeger ability. Okay, let's drop my Possessed Marine. 
Let's see what he comes out with now. Ooh, more barricades. Possessed Marine does have a uh, cleave. Again, that guy does have. I'm going to make some more barricades. But this is actually a pretty stupid move, or at least pretty poor positioning by him. Watch what I do here. I can attack that, then use Arkel Tal's ability to kill that guy off. And I still have six energy left. So what I'm going to do over here is drop Zesugul squad and then I'm actually going to bring in Gorlem squad right now and that gives him some useful buffs. He's got Survivor and Ward. Okay, and that's what I was waiting for. Okay, I could have used Baltimore's sword to kill it but I have another idea here right now. So drop a bunch of stuff. That's creating a chaos spawn. Attack with him. And now I can just use my other two guys to headbutt into Draeger and keeps creating chaos spawns. There we go. So that set me up nicely for the next turn. Sword Backpal MVP. And now he gives up. Alright, so anyway, I hope that's given you a bit of an idea about how to play Argol Tal instead of Raum. And especially you can see how Arkel Tal can really benefit from how strong the Word Bearers deck is. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll be continuing to turn out quality Word Bearers content in the next couple of days. So until the next video, bye for now guys.